What's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Oh, I'm supposed to salute. Anyway, <laughs> listen, man. It's been a minute since we did one of these animated horror stories, right? It's been a minute. I can't even actually recall in my brain when it was the last time we did one, so I'm extra hyped to get to one. And this one is two McDonald's horror stories, right? Now, when it comes to McDonald's, just McDonald's alone to me is a horror story. Anyway, I don't personally, I, it's been a while. Like the only thing I'll eat out of McDonald's is breakfast. Other than that, if I eat something out of there, bro, my stomach just like driving past uh, McDonald's gives me gas, bro. Like, like indigestion, gas, all that kind of stuff. Just, it, it does it to me, man. I don't know what it is about that place, but maybe it was that movie I watched that time where they was talking about the chicken nuggets was made out of like retarded uh, chicken. They called it retarded chicken breast meat or something like that is what they called it in that movie. I cannot think of the name of that. Oh, uh, what was it? Was it Super Size Me? Was it Super Size Me? I think it was Super Size Me. But anyway, man, yeah, ever since then, I was off of it. I was done with it. They even talked about somebody left a sandwich in the windowsill of an, a doctor's office or something on, and what, uh, it was, it was, it was horrible. It was horrible. So the McDonald's alone, I, I don't even have to watch this to already have, you know what I mean? Horror stories in my brain about McDonald's, but we're going to check it out nonetheless anyway. All right. So if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and join the family. Let's go. I'm not sure if this is the creepiest or the most disgusting thing to ever happen to me, but here it is. I'm a 17 year old female and this happened about 3 months ago. Me and my friends always liked to go to McDonald's after we had a good yoga session. You could call us regulars. We probably did yoga together to a- Yoga? Then McDonald's? Yo, isn't that kind of like defeating the purpose of- I don't know. Ah. Anyway, carry on. Three times a week, and it wasn't a class or anything. It was just me and three of my friends. We had another friend, Olivia, who occasionally joined us, but she was kind of flaky. If she didn't feel like doing yoga that day, we just went ahead and did it without her. We had been in this routine for a couple of weeks at this point, and we always looked forward to getting some nice junk food. There was something about McDonald's that was like the guilty pleasure of my entire existence. I normally didn't get it otherwise, but I really look forward to the couple of occasions that me and my friends went there. But this one experience was horrible. I had been there enough that I started to recognize the people that worked there. I never had conversations with them, but I knew their faces well enough to spot when someone new was in the back working. That's exactly what happened this one Wednesday afternoon. I noticed this guy with really thin hair. He had a really creepy face, and I'm not sure how to describe it exactly. His eyes were humongous. They looked like the eyes of a bug. And then he had this really strange body language that always kind of freaked me out. It was like jump. He looked like he drive a van with no windows in it. And like none. Like and and the lining in the back part of the van is like like the the black lining trash bags and different things back there too yeah yeah he fit he fit the description Umpy or something if he was deep frying french fries for example he would stand perfectly still for a second and then really quickly submerge them in one motion and it would splash grease all over this was very unusual considering i had seen enough people put down fries that there was an easier way he could have done that he didn't have to splash it like that yeah, she's definitely been there too long. I was watching him one day and we made eye contact. It was really unusual too because I was looking at him as my mom's credit card was processing to pay for my meal. He had his back turned toward me. I was trying to figure out if I knew who he was and then he just spun around to look at me. And it was all in one motion. It was just really freaky. So I started noticing him more and more. He was always working whenever my friends and I got finished with our yoga. It didn't bother me too much. My friends also noticed how weird he was and told me about similar experiences. 
It wasn't creepy enough that we stopped going or anything, but it was certainly enough to notice. I remember the day in particular. It was a weekend because I didn't have school that day. Me and my friends had just finished a really good yoga session and we headed over to McDonald's. Anyway, my friends and I ordered our food and were waiting for a few minutes. It took a little bit longer than usual, which isn't really an issue because we're not impatient or anything, but here was the weird part. They weren't busy. We were basically the only people in there waiting for food and I think they had one other person who had already ordered who was sitting down and already eating. I didn't see any cars in the drive through and I just found the whole situation extremely bizarre. I had noticed that the creepy guy was working, but I didn't see him for a very long time. He went behind a wall that I couldn't see him around, and I wasn't sure why he did this either. Life went on, and we got our food and sat down. I normally start by eating my fries, and then have whatever my main meal is after that. Today it happens to be chicken nuggets. I got it. She had to go for the chicken nuggets, right? Had to go for the chicken nuggets. Ten piece. As I was eating, I felt that creepy guy's watchful eyes looming over us. I felt really freaked out and I convinced my friends to take our meal into the car to leave. As we left, I looked back to see him frowning at me. I didn't stop walking. Well, we got out there and for a few minutes I felt like I was being paranoid and I overreacted. My friends thought so too until I looked at my chicken nuggets. I looked inside of the box they were in, and they seemed to be covered in some kind of weird substance. I couldn't quite make- Oh, hell no! I swear to you, oh, hell no! No, nah, it, uh, yeah, I'm thinking the same thing y'all thinking right now. He, oh, fam, I would lose my, ugh, oh, ugh. Oh. Make it out, and I didn't know what to think. My immediate reaction was that they had put mayonnaise on it or something. Thankfully, I was smart enough to ask my friends before I took a bite. My one friend screamed. That freak jizzed on your nuggets. I knew it! 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 Oh! Bam! Oh! We were right. We were right. I know y'all y'all thought it too. I know y'all thought it too. Y'all way too smart not to. Oh. 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 Sick son of a... Oh. Oh. You gotta die after something like that. Like, there's no coming back from that, bro. Don't play with me like... No. At all. Oh. The more I analyze the Some of y'all might be eating out right now watching this. Check your food right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The strange substance on my chicken nuggets, the more convinced I became that it really was, in fact, that. That certainly explains why it had taken so long for us to get our food. I didn't quite understand how he was able to pull it off, though. He was one of at least five other workers there. It's not like they would have just allowed him to do this, right? Whatever the case may have been, I didn't feel comfortable eating those chicken nuggets and I threw them out without- You think? I didn't feel comfortable eating those. You think? Hesitation. My friends and I were all really freaked out that this had happened to us. My friends threw out the rest of their food just to be on the safe side. We weren't really sure if we should have reported this incident to the police or something. We really didn't know what. Yeah, they should have took the bag to the police and got his DNA. Ugh. 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 Imagine how many people he probably did that to. What to do. We just kind of laughed it off as being one of those crazy life experiences, and that was it. I haven't gone back to McDonald's since this whole experience. But yeah, that's the story of how I ordered chicken nuggets one time, and the freaky guy working there put his secret sauce on them. Fam, 
how would y'all have responded? She's too nice. Some people that were just way too nice, bro. It's like, it's certain lines you don't cross, right? And then it's there. there's another line that's a death line just beyond that line that you shouldn't have crossed, but you crossed it. And there's another line there and you crossed that one too. That's that death line. He crossed that death line, bro. Oh, fam. No, 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 no way. You had the audacity. You was bold. You, you really, nah, nah. Okay. I don't think you guys are even going to believe this story, but it's 100% true. Just happened last week. I don't know how else I could even preface this dumpster fire of a story, but here it goes. I'm a 22-year-old male, and I live with my fiancé. We had a nice apartment, but we were really looking to buy a house. I know, a little young for that, but we both landed really nice jobs after college and figured that it's better to get it out of the way now and start settling down. We're kind of old-fashioned like that. My fiancé's grandmother owns a home and no one lives in it. She had it for about a year since a family relative passed away. No one wanted anything to do with it since there was a lot of work that needed to be done, like painting the walls and redoing the floors and just various tasks like that. It wasn't completely horrible inside, but there was enough work that it literally sat there for a good little while. Well, my fiancé and I started talking to her grandmother after buying the place. She told us that she would sell it to us for a low enough price that we would be able to afford all of the renovations and whatnot. We were really excited about it. It was really exciting to think we were going to have purchased our first home together so shortly after graduating from college. But here was the problem. She had a lot of people in her family who started feeling left out. It was my fiancé's aunt and her two sons. Their father had died shortly after the second son was born and the mother had a hard time coping with everything. She was a regular drinker and arguably an alcoholic. My fiancé told me that they were extremely negative people, and after meeting them a few times at family functions, I was surprised at how right she was. They lived in government housing. She collected disability fraudulently, and her two sons didn't work, despite one being 24 and the other being 19. There were whispers of drug abuse in there, too. Suffice to know that these were not the kind of people you wanted to associate with. When word got out that we were buying the house from her grandma they started feeling really left out. There were a few occasions where they'd try offering to watch the house, very obviously an attempt to get in there and do God only knows what. We politely declined and did everything we could to avoid them. I happened to be at the house one day. My fiancé was working and I work remotely online, so I was home alone. I had just walked down the street to buy a lemonade when I saw someone at her house. It was extremely unexpected. I got ready to confront a potential burglar when I noticed it was my fiancé's cousin trying to break in. He was startled when he saw me and froze for a minute. I asked him what he was doing and he told me something about thinking he saw a car he didn't recognize in the driveway. I explained that it was my car and he left without any big confrontation. As he walked away though- So then you have to start asking yourself, is it worth it? I'm going to be like, hell yeah, it's worth it, especially if we got it for a steal. The property is worth it. Just got to deal with a few family members. Oh, I, we can handle that. We can handle that. No problem. Let's go ahead and get this out the way now. You know what I'm saying? Let's get this out the way now. I got a few friends of mine I like y'all to meet. Stay off my property or if you don't want to meet them. Simple as that. Simple as that. I'm going to tell you once. Don't make me tell you twice. So I heard him start cursing under his breath. This was the point when I started feeling like we had something to worry about. Not feeling it safe inside your own home is the worst feeling ever, especially being two young recent college graduates. We both worked really hard to make this happen, and the idea that it made us feel unsafe there really bothered us. I still didn't even understand what they wanted out of the whole ordeal. They didn't have enough money to afford the property tax alone. Forget about utilities and anything else. About two weeks went by without any kind of confrontation. I had falsely convinced myself that they'd finally leave us alone. I was dead wrong. We went to McDonald's one day, exactly one week ago today, the day I'm writing this. 
Me and my fiancé both just wanted to be out of the house for a little while. Considering we were in the process of buying a house, we didn't want to go eat anywhere expensive, so McDonald's just seemed like a logical decision. Now before I continue, I feel the need to explain something about my fiancé and I. We are normally very serious people. We work very hard and we're both kind of workaholics, but when we get together to have some fun, we go hard. Work hard, play hard, right? But we got kind of silly when we played. Let me cut to the chase. We were both playing in the ball pit at our local McDonald's. We always enjoyed goofing off like that and we weren't too concerned with what people would think of us. We'd only been messing around for... That's... that's... Some weird kinky foreplay right there. Uh, uh, that's yeah, that's some weird kinky foreplay right there. Uh, uh, no. Five minutes when her cousin showed up at McDonald's too. It was creepy. He walked right in, looked at us the entire time. Before he even opened the front door, his eyes were stuck on us, and they felt heavy. My fiance immediately knew something was wrong when my facial expression changed and. She darted around to see what I was looking at. We both watched as her cousin made his way out to the ball pit. Is he in the ball pit right now? Is he in the ball pit right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta fight him at that point. You gotta tackle him. Hey, you don't get in the ball pit with us, and we already got this weird exchange between us, and now you're just gonna get in the ball pit with us? Nah. He stepped outside. As he walked, he moved his body to grab something out of his pocket. I couldn't see what it was, but my first thought was a gun or a knife. The look in his eyes told me he was out to do serious harm. He jumped into the ball pit in my direction. I luckily landed one solid punch in his face as he came down. It threw him off. I had an advantage. He kicked me in the stomach, but I landed a few more punches on his face. He started screaming for me to stop and that I was killing him. I would have kept going if my fiancé hadn't been watching. He started this, not me. We got out of the ball pit. He then began telling us that he was going to press charges on me for assaulting him. I wasn't even phased by this. There were plenty of witnesses there that had seen the whole thing transpire. I started telling him that I was calling the cops and I was going to press charges on him. He got really panicked and ran back to his car and drove off. I'm not going to lie to you. This whole thing really shook me up. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. I looked around online and found an easy solution. A restraining order. My fiancé and I had both gotten restraining orders on her aunt and her two cousins. I didn't know why we didn't think of this sooner. They really solved the issue and once they understood that we had a restraining order against them, they buggered right off. I haven't seen or heard from them since. And thankfully, and hopefully, that's the end of my story. Like he said, thankfully, and hopefully, it's the end of his story. Fam, that's crazy. You got to put a restraining order on your own family, your own family members. But that's how it be, man. The ones closest to you, the ones you got to watch. You got to watch them. Can't trust them. They out sneaky, you know? Instead of being happy for you that you got the place, it's a lot of jealousy, man. You know how the jealousy game go. But two crazy uh, McDonald's stories. One, we got the crazy dude who just jizzing in everybody's food, just all willy-nilly like that, just sick. <laughs> and then we got the dude that's hopping in the ball pit with two other grown people that should never be in the ball pit. This is insane, but I like I like his story so far. I like his story so far, man. So y'all make sure y'all go show some love to uh, Mort. Subscribe to his channel, man. All right? And uh, stick around and stay tuned, man. It's your boy L. Leave a like, share the video, subscribe to the next reaction of my peace. Y'all stay solid. Hey.